What do I do? Just oh, yeah, it's ready to record. Thank you, sir. Joe Menel, also. Yeah. 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 You know, I like a lot of you. I, uh, I'm tomorrow, but uh, I was actually also born in Los Angeles. By, uh, my father was in the army, and so I was kind of a military brat, like a lot. And so, born there, and, and then I also went to school out there. So, welcome home to all of you. Thank you, sir. You know, it's, uh, it's an honor to, to have you guys here, and especially uh, come visit us up here in, in Adelaide. As you walked in here, you, you saw some of the artifacts that I have chosen to put into my office yes, that have otherwise been languishing in the Guam Museum in the, in the, in the back in the store room, in the storehouse. And the reason is, is that I decided to do that because, as you know, there's this very large buildup that's going to happen here in Guam in the yes. store. And it was important for me that the visitors that come to see us, these CEOs of these large uh, multinational corporations, these admirals and these generals that are coming here, to realize that we've had a history on Guam that predated us being an important military outpost. And that we've had a history here that, that is thousands and thousands of years old. In fact, if you look around, you'll see some of our artifacts. And one of the most amazing of the artifacts is this particular uh, uh, snake stone. So, I mean, when, when the Admirals see this, they're amazed because, well, you know, when David killed Goliath, right. he killed him with a stone that he picked out of a brook, right, uh, a river. Mm -hmm. So he just picked the stone out of it. And so, but our ancestors knew then the aerodynamics of a football a long time before the NFL did. Oh, wow. So you see that obviously, the football has a particular shape because it has a certain aerodynamics that increases its velocity and its accuracy. Sure. Our people figured that out a long time before they did. And so that makes it special okay, sure. for, for us as, as, as tomorrow. Because there's no other islands that have sling stones of this particular shape. That happens to also be the seal, the shape of our seal. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's an important thing. Now, one other thing that, that I keep in here is this this book here? You guys are probably in a hurry, but I like to talk. <laughs> and it's called. This is a book called Mapping the World. Okay. Now, I have been a collector of Guam maps for the longest time, and my interest in it is because Guam and the Marianas has had many different names in the past. Okay. Wahan is is one of our names. Uh, the archipelago or the island group of the Marianas has been called many different things, including uh, the Marianas. It's been called Magellan's Archipelago. It's been called Isla de Ladrones. Now, what does Isla de Ladrones mean? Island of the Thieves, right? And so, but yet, there's a very little known historical fact that pri right prior to us being called Island of the Thieves or Isla de Ladrones, we were called something else. And I've never been able to prove that, although historically I've read it in many different books. And the one way that I thought it could be proven is that if we found a map, a map that dates way back and it shows on a map, it will recall this. And so imagine this, okay? With Ferdinand Magellan, uh, he was the first man to attempt to circumnavigate the globe. In other words, to go completely around the Earth. And so this was, Ferdinand Magellan was the most powerful sailor of the most powerful country in the 1500s. Spain was the superpower that ruled the world. And so in 1521, Ferdinand Magellan, sailing for Spain, left with his task force. You know, if you can imagine a large carrier task force like the United States Navy has to be going out to try to go around the world. 
And so they go, they run in South America, they go down the coast, then they come into the Pacific for the first time the Europeans are in the Pacific. But he gets lost for three months. Ferdinand Magellan and his three ships, the task force of the most powerful nation in the world at the time, Spain, gets lost. And as he's going through, the, his men are eating rats off of the ship. They're taking leather off of the strappings because they didn't have any food, and they were dying. Until all of a until he just happens to run into our island group. And at least historically, from what we're able to put together, he came through the channel of uh, between Rota and Guam. Sails through and then comes down the, 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 this, this side here. Now, interestingly enough about him was that if you've been lost for three months, you haven't eaten anything good for a long time, you haven't seen a, a, a woman for three months, so that's pretty like her. And, uh, so you would have had many different, you're standing over there, you can imagine this admiral on the task force coming in with his ships, the biggest, most powerful ships at the time of the most powerful nation, and you would think that, man, you know, I'm dying to eat something. He could have called us island of the most beautiful, I mean, of the best food. Did he call us that? He could have called us island of the most beautiful women in the world. And they do come from here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's from Maroon now, so. And so, um, the island of the most beautiful women in the world. But no, here's this admiral of a task force coming in with all his might on the, his care task force. And he's sitting there, he's starving, and he, he hasn't seen the work for a while. He goes, what was that that passed by? He was most impressed by our canoe, the proa. And there, in fact, is a copy of the actual drawing of, at the time, the most impressive vehicle to the most powerful sailor in the world at the time, our pro. He was so amazed at it that he called us Isla de las Velas, which means Island of the Latin Sails. And what it was is because the shape of our sails and the way it sheen, he was impressed by that boat. And so, in order for me to prove that, I've been wanting to try to find a map that actually showed that. But every single map that I've ever found, I wanted to own, is twenty to thirty thousand dollars. And they own, there's very few of them. They exist. And so, but here in Costa Mesa, California, now you know at the uh, borders, Costa Mesa, <laughs> California, for twelve for twelve ninety five at borders, I saw this and I said, man, let me take a look at it. And sure enough, here on a map. It shows that on a map that was uh, not that long after Ferdinand Magellan sailed, it is a map that shows Isla de las Vegas, <laughs> Island of the Latin Sails or North, with the sails. And this is Guam. And so, what it again says to me, okay, that if you were always called, <clears throat> you guys are nothing but a bunch of thieves, you, if you're from the Isla de Ladrones, then that's a self-fulfilling prophecy as far as self-esteem about who we were. We're not worth anything. We're just a bunch of thieves. We stole off the ships. But if at one time we realized that to this large world that we live in, that we were the marvel of the most powerful nation at the time because of our technology, that ship, then that's something to be proud of. Just like that stinks though. It's in its simplicity, to me, nobody realizes how Technological, technologically, technologically advanced that particular stone is, but it is. So it's something to be proud of. And so, when when you guys come home, 